First, for an update on development in South Sudan, we are joined by John Tanza, host of VOA South Sudan in Focus, a weekly radio program. Hello, John. Hello, Shaka Sali. How are you? I'm doing well. Talk to us about uh, the latest developments uh, from Juba. Well, what is coming out of Juba is the latest is that uh, President Kir reshuffled the transitional government of national unity yesterday on Tuesday. And uh, the people who have been affected in this reshuffle are mostly members of the SPLM in opposition who have been in the transitional government of national unity. The, these are ministers who have been uh, supporting Riyak Machar since uh, President Kir uh, appointed uh, Taban Dengai to be the first vice president. So those who have been uh, supporting Riyak Machar were removed from the transitional government of national unity. To what extent uh, does uh, President Sarva Kir have the authority uh, to make such a decision uh, as far as uh, the IGAD agreement is concerned? The agreement is clear that should any of the parties want to replace their representative in the transitional government of national unity, they are supposed to give a 14 days notice to the Council of Ministers, and then this notice will be given to the president and the vice president so that these changes will take effect. But it seems like from the day Taban Dengai was sworn in as the first vice president, it was just seven days after that and the, the reshuffle happened yesterday. So in essence, it is a, a situation where you can easily say that the, the agreement was not followed to the letter. Do you, for example, agree with some of the pundits who have been fact saying that uh, what we are looking at really uh, is what would be characterized as a constitutional coup against the peace deal. I've spoken to several ministers who left Juba. For instance, I spoke to the former Minister of uh, Education, that's Professor Peter Nyaba, who actually told me that what is happening in Juba is uh, a coup because he says President Kir is working with Taban Dengai to change and dismantle whatever was agreed upon in Addis Ababa. And he gave me an example that uh, what, uh, what happened in Juba when IO members uh, met and elected Taban Dengai was unprocedural because if they are following the peace agreement, the peace agreement says that should any parties to the peace deal want to change, for instance, any member of their party, they are supposed to have uh, met and decide on that. For instance, the party rules of the SPLM in opposition says it's the National Liberation Council and the members of the political bureau who are supposed to sit and decide who should take over, should Machar not be there. And what happened in Juba was that there were only four members of the National Liberation Council from the SPLM IO who actually sat and decided that Taban Dengai should take over because Machar was not communicating with his party leaders. So uh, Professor uh, Peter Nyaba was telling me that was a coup because the IO members did not follow the rules and President Salva Kiir accepted whatever the IO decided, which was unprocedural.